I want to talk about the Hunter Biden scandal in this video. Now, I don't mean to make the case for Biden family corruption, nor am I going to make an attempt to prove Russian collusion and a big smear campaign from the Trump administration. It's not really my point. My point is to relate what's happening with the whole Biden issue, the Hunter Biden and Joe Biden and James Biden issue, with another theme I've been talking about almost the whole time I've been on YouTube, and that is the drift in this country towards a new civil war. I called it a cold civil war, a novel civil war, and some of the more recent videos have actually said it's already begun at a low level, which I believe is true. I want to, to discuss how this scandal deepens that problem with our drift towards civil war, because I think it's really significant. And the significance lies in the fact that no matter which side is telling the truth, really doesn't matter. The bottom line is we are drifting ever deeper into civil war. What do I mean by that? Well, we have two sides taking diametrically opposed positions, and they both can't be right, and they both can't be wrong. One side is lying, one side is being honest. And that's the problem. Let's look at it from a perspective of the left, from Democrats, from the Bidens themselves. If you believe their narrative. These documents are part of a vast effort of disinformation coordinated by the Russians, by Vladimir Putin. If you believe the Democrat narrative, you know, Donald Trump is in on this, the Attorney General is in on this, the Director of National Intelligence is in on this, the Director of the FBI is in on this, the New York Post, Fox News, and assorted other right-leaning news outlets, uh, people on social media, like me, we're all in on this, and we are either knowingly operating as agents for Russia, or we're dupes who have been misled into acting as fools for Putin and his regime. That's the narrative, and that's what the left is arguing. Whether they believe it or not is something else. Let's look at it from the point of view of the, the narrative of the right, or the narrative of conservatives, or the narrative of Republicans. If you accept that narrative, then uh, Hunter and his father and the whole family are involved in corruption to enrich the family with Ukraine, Kazakhstan, and the People's Republic of China. The People's Republic of China, which is a far greater danger to this country than Russia. If you believe the, what we'll call the right narrative, then the Bidens, Kamala Harris, leading American politicians, the vast majority of the mainstream media, and even the chair of the House Intelligence Committee, Adam Schiff, who claims to have actually seen information about this, just like he saw information about Trump's collusion before, you know, three, four years ago, which never really materialized, did it? But anyway, he's seen it, and he assures us it's Russian collusion. And that's that narrative. Now, if you look at the two narratives, and you don't have to accept either one, but you know intuitively one is right and one is wrong. One group is being honest. The other group, they're all liars, and they're all basically being treasonous toward the United States. If you accept the left narrative, the people on the right are all traitors. They're all working for Vladimir Putin. If you believe the right narrative, everybody on the left is, is working for, you know, President Xi of the People's Republic of China. 
And again, on both sides, some people are working knowingly as agents of these foreign countries. Others are just dupes. Whether you're on the right or the left, it doesn't really matter. It, it works both ways. And those are the two narratives. Only one is truthful, and the other one is false. But what that means is, no matter how this plays out, whether it turns out that this is all a bunch of bull or it is all real, and that would be the topic of another video, but no matter which way it plays out, half of this country, half of our national establishment, you know, political, media, intellectual, is working in conjunction with a foreign power. That's bad news. And it doesn't matter which way it goes. It doesn't matter which side turns out to be correct. Because no matter how it plays out, half the country is, is working in a treasonous fashion. That is nothing but another step, a very large step, to move this country into something approaching a bloody full-scale civil war. And that's what scares me. Like I said, I've been warning about the prospect of a full-scale civil war, something approaching a full-scale civil war, uh, for over three years. I think it was about three years ago on Facebook, I ended my first post with the Latin, venit bello civili, which I mean, literally it translates as it, it comes war civil, but you know, a more accurate English translation would be civil war is coming. I'm sure a lot of people thought I was crazy when I did that. But Google, Google coming civil war today, and you'll see all kinds of hits. I'm not the only one talking about it. It doesn't seem like such a far-fetched possibility. And what happened this week, while people are arguing, you know, for either of the two narratives, to me, as I'm watching, I'm thinking, oh my God, this is really bad. The consensus is breaking down. We're headed toward something much larger and probably much more violent. As I've often explained in my videos, this country is held together by ideas. Being an American is a, an idea, it's a concept. You know, I, I, uh, my partner's from South Korea. She's an American citizen. Koreans can come to this country and become Americans. I can't really go to Korea or a place like Japan and become Korean or Japanese. Even if somehow I could get citizenship, I'm, I'll never be Korean. She is an American. I mean, there's plenty of other Americans who are just like her or, or different, and we're all different. That's the kind of country it is. What holds us together isn't color, it's not ethnicity, it's not national origin, it's not religion. It's a set of political ideas embodied in the Declaration, the Constitution, court cases, all these other things. That's what makes you an American. And, you know, we saw, as, as I've argued in other videos, if you look at the American Civil War, the consensus in the country was pretty secure. Most Americans believed and shared most of the same ideas, except on the issue of slavery. And that one issue, because it was so central and so large and so profound, tore this country apart. If we fought the Civil War like that today, given the scale of growth of the population, we'd have 7 million dead in this country, somewhere between 7 and 8 million. I mean, you're talking about a bloody war. We've never lost a million people in a war. And you're talking about 7 million. The Civil War was the bloodiest war we fought. Almost half of all the Americans who died in American wars died just in that one war compared to all the other wars we've been in, and there have been many. That's how bloody that war was. And, and that's what scares me. When I say we're headed toward that, that's not a good thing. That's not something I say lightly. It's not something I'm hoping for. It's something I'm afraid of. And it's something I've been trying to warn people about for three years. The consensus is disappearing because all the institutions, all the ideas that undergird are the foundations of that consensus over the past few decades have been systematically attacked, 
undermined, and in many cases, outright destroyed. Use sports as an example. Sports was an institution that could bring together the right and the left. You know, I had friends who were, you know, big liberals. And I had friends who were big conservatives, and we'd all go to, you know, college football games together at the university where I worked. Sports united us. It was part of something that supported a national consensus. Today, sports has become a divisive issue. You, know, you have people boycotting sports because of Black Lives Matter. You have people who want to support sports because of Black Lives Matter. It's become divisive. And that's happened with institution after institution in this country. Our courts have been politicized. I mean, our politics by nature were politicized. But the courts were supposed to be above that. No more. I mean, like people like to say that they are. But then why do they worry about who's appointing the judges? Why do we always identify if a judge makes a decision in some court case, he'll be identified as a, a Bush appointee, a Bush judge, an Obama judge, a Trump judge. Because we destroyed, we politicized the court, yet another institution that's been destroyed. And as these, this destruction takes place, the consensus is destroyed. And as the consensus is destroyed, there's nothing left to hold the country together. I posted a video a while back, why are we still a country? Why are we still a country? It's a question. But I never got an answer. I don't have an answer. Is there, what binds us together anymore? Habit? Inertia? Ennui? Why are we still together? People are so different between the right and the left, not just in, in their politics, but in their their philosophy, their, their economics, their concepts of education, their approach to religion, their approach to philosophy, their approach to art, their approach to sports, everything. This country has just been cleaved in two. And what I see happening with this Hunter Biden thing is it's cleaving it further now, because now not only do we see ourselves as partisans, but now we're, we're going to see each other when this is over. One side is going to see the other side as traitors. It's that simple. If it turns out that this is all bogus, not necessarily Russian disinformation, but it's all blown out of proportion, it's warped, it's distorted, it's been used for political purposes, it's a Republican October surprise, as people are familiar with that term. What's, what are the people on the left going to think? How are they going to look at people on the right, like me, knowing that they tried to, from the point of view of the left, steal the election? Steal an election from Joe Biden and the Democrats. And if it turns out that this is false, they'd have a point. But conversely, what if it turns out it's true? That Joe Biden is corrupt. Joe Biden was getting money from the Chinese. But Joe Biden did use his position as vice president, despite his denials, to work with his son to enrich the family. The people, what are people on the right like me going to think about Democrats who just tried to foist this corrupt politician who is incoherent, and probably losing his mind, on us as president? And one of those two things has to happen. And God forbid, what happens if Trump is reelected and then they determine this is all bogus? You know what's been going on in the street since, well, in some ways, since Donald Trump was elected, but even at, you know, scaled up since the spring. What do you think our streets are going to look like if it turns out that happens and Trump wins? What's going to happen in this country if? Biden wins, and it turns out that it's true. Remember, I mean, I lived through Watergate. Richard Nixon won an overwhelming, resounding political victory over George McGovern in 1972. And what happened? It turned out he was a crook. He was corrupt. He had lied. They'd been covering for him. The Watergate story, you know, trickled out, and then it broke. And then we were stuck with a, a president who was 
His presidency was destroyed. It was pulling the country apart. The Republicans at the time agreed with the Democrats that Nixon had to go. They didn't actually ever get to the point of impeaching him. But had he not resigned, that's what would have happened. And Republicans would have went along with it. If Biden becomes president, are they going to, you know, they probably would work with the Republicans to impeach Biden and then just put Kamala Harris in there, which is probably the plan all along. But how are the people on the right going to react to that? If Joe Biden got in there because the Democrats lied and knowingly, these people, if, if this is true, the Democrats in the hierarchy of that party know it's true. They've known it's true all along. What's the response going to be? What kind of legitimacy will Joe Biden or, or Kamala Harris have if that's how they gain the presidency? If it turns out that this stuff is true. Now, if it turns out that it's bogus, fine, no problem. But these are the dangers that we're running. And I see people on the left, you know, ready to just tamp this down, say it's wrong, it's Russian collusion. And people on the right are, ah, you know, we're going to get Joe Biden. But that's like tactical thinking. I'm looking strategically here. What happens when this is over? Because half the country is in cahoots with the Russians, or half the country is basically in cahoots with the Chinese. Half the country is lying, the other half is telling the truth. That doesn't build consensus in the country. That destroys consensus in the country. And when the consensus in this country is totally gone, there's nothing left but civil strife, civil war. A cold civil war, maybe. A novel civil war, as I've termed it. But civil war, all the same. I'd like to know what you think. Because I think this is like a huge issue to me. Not just, you know, who's telling the truth or not. But the breakdown of a consensus in this country, which is dangerous. So leave a comment. If you like the video, got something out of it, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel. Hit the notification button so you know when I post new videos. Share the videos with your friends. I mean, if you're, most of my subscribers are probably to the right, you can actually share this with your friends on the left. Because whichever way this goes, if they're right or you're right, it really doesn't matter. We're in big trouble. And this should be understood by people on both sides of that proverbial aisle. But for my friends, people who think like me, who subscribe to this channel, as I usually end it, stand firm, stand tall, and keep fighting.